Okay, and we are looking at permutations today. Now, this is where we're making selections and the order matters. So that means if you picked things in a different order, it would give you a different outcome. So you need to be able to remember that is really important. When the order makes a difference, you're using permutations. Now, usually there'll be more items than we have spaces to fill. So there'll be more things we can choose from than we have places that we need to put things into. So for example, we've got the digits 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 written on a card each. Three of those cards are going to be picked out and placed together to make a number. We want to find out how many different three digit numbers could be made from these um, five that we've got to choose from. Now the order matters here. If we picked 3, 1, 5, that would give us a different number than if we'd picked 1, then 3, then 5. The order makes a different outcome, so we're using permutations. We've got five numbers to pick from and three spaces to fill. So we've got this happening. In the first place, we've got a choice of five. In the second, once we've picked that first one, we've got a choice of four. And once we pick the first two, we've only got three we could choose from. That would give us 60. Now, if you were doing this with large amounts of things, this would get you know fairly complicated. So we can make this a little easier if we use our factorial notation. So if we think about that top bit as being five factorial, but it's not quite five factorial. Five factorial would have that extra two times one at the end. So we divide by that two times one and we'll get that original five times four times three thing. So we have that five factorial and on the bottom it's five minus three factorial. This we call five P three, P standing for permutations. And that's just the notation we have for doing this particular calculation. And we can put this into general terms. So if we're thinking about the number of permutations of selecting R items from a possible group of N distinct items, it looks like this. So we note that down as NPR, and that's the same as N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So what that's saying is, is do all of your things that you could choose from, the N number, so in the previous case it was 5, but then you're going to divide by the things that you didn't want. So if on that first one we were picking three, then the two times one was the bit we didn't want. So if we can subtract that from the original amount, that will give us that bottom number there. Now there is a button for this on your calculator, you'll be pleased to know. It looks a little bit like this. So find that on your calculator, see where it is. It might be um, above an another button that says NCR, we'll come to that one later. But you might need to press shift to get there. So let's have a look at an example. There are six runners in a race. We want to know how many different ways that first and second place could be awarded. Now this is a permutation. If you put somebody in first place and somebody else in second place, that would be a different outcome to if you had switched those two over. So the order is important here. We do, we've got six items to choose from, six people in the race. We're picking two of them. So, you know, to award the first and second place to, and that would expand to 6 factorial over 6 minus 2 factorial. That simplifies to 4 factorial on the bottom. So that would just leave us with the 6 times 5 at the top, and that gives us 30. And if you want to go back to thinking about it like the arrangements we were doing before, we've got six possible people could take first place, and once one of those has been picked, there's only five people left that could take second place, doing the six times five. Okay, another example. Now, I've taken this from the previous video, and it's important that you know there's, there's usually a number of different ways of solving these permutations and combinations questions. So we have done this once by looking at it as, you know, logically thinking around arrangements. We can also use permutations to do this one. So the, the company labelling its invoices with a code made from three letters followed by three numbers. We want to know how many different codes there are if no characters are repeated. So we can do this with permutations by thinking we've got three letters. That would be like this. Three letters would be 26 possible things we could choose from, and we're picking three of them. 
followed by three numbers, so there's ten possible digits from zero to nine. We're picking three of them, times them together, and you get this. And if you want to go back to the previous video, you can see that's the exact same number that we worked out the other way of doing it. Okay, so that is permutations, and you've got some um, examples to work on from the book, and hopefully you'll get the swing of this. It does take a little bit of getting used to with um, permutations and combinations, so don't be too bogged down if this doesn't come easily. You will get there, I promise. <laughs>